Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of 110 Things to See with a Telescope and Learn to Stargaze for Kids. Now Nicholas at All Star Telescope just sent me this Evo Lux 82, a premium small telescope. Now if you've seen my other videos, you know that I have requirements for what constitutes a beginner telescope. Red dot finder, 90 degree diagonal, and AZ mount. Premium telescopes don't come with any of those. You just get the optical tube. The telescope manufacturer assumes that you either have those already or that you'll customize the telescope to suit your needs. According to Skywatcher, this telescope was designed for astrophotography and is a grab-and-go telescope for visual observing. Just a reminder to subscribe to Learn to Stargaze by hitting the subscribe button to help you get the most out of your stargazing experience. This is Learn to Stargaze. Be sure to watch until the end of this video as we take an epic photo of the Rosette Nebula let's take a closer look at the scope itself. This is a doublet refractor, which means that it uses two pieces of glass to make up the primary lens. Now, typically, premium refractors are triplets using three pieces of glass. This telescope claims to be apochromatic, or APO, which in brands other than Skywatcher is typically only seen in triplets. However, Skywatcher claims to have achieved this with two pieces of glass using, and I quote, a proprietary combination of matched lenses. Apochromatic means that the telescope corrects for chromatic aberration in the entire spectrum of visible light, from red to green to blue. Note that this telescope also comes in a 62mm version for even wider fields of view. And here are some other premium features. The lenses are all multi-coated with anti-reflective coatings and are made from ED glass. ED glass stands for extra low dispersion, and is just another way that premium telescopes reduce chromatic aberration for superior views. The telescope also includes a dual speed focuser for very precise focusing. Now out of the box, the fine focus knob didn't work. I've seen this on other telescopes as well. You just need to use an Allen key and make the adjustment here. There may be other adjustments you'll need to make to the focusing assembly to customize it to your setup. The clamshell here includes two mounting brackets. For me, if I were doing astrophotography, one would be for the guide scope and the other would be for my ASI Air. The telescope can also be rotated within the clamshell and the clamshell can move up and down. The scope includes this dovetail, which can be moved to adjust balance and also has lots of places to mount additional accessories. Now the dew shield on this telescope is huge and it extends using these two knobs here and slides way out and can be moved back in for ease of carrying. This scope has a focal ratio of 6.5 and a focal length of 550 millimeters. It weighs just 6.5 pounds, so hypothetically it's still within the weight limits of both the small mounts that I've been using for astrophotography, the Sky Hunter, and the AZ GTI with the wedge. For astrophotography, they have a matching focal reducer field flattener for this telescope. The idea of the flattener reducer is twofold. First, it reduces the focal length, making the telescope even faster, but it also flattens the field so that the focal plane lies flat on the sensor and corrects for aberrations at the edge of your camera's field of view. Now, I wasn't sent the matched flattener reducer, so I'm curious how it works without it. And also, I can use the flattener reducer that I already have, even though it's not technically matched to this telescope. So I'll test that out as well. For astrophotography, Skywatcher also makes an optional rotator, which also includes a place to screw in your filters. This allows you to easily rotate the camera's field of view. But I don't have that either, so I'm just gonna screw my filters into the bottom of my field flattener or test this without a filter at all. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is test this telescope for visual observation. I'm gonna add a two inch star diagonal. I'll add a two inch 20 millimeter eyepiece. I'm gonna add a finder and place the telescope on an atazimuth mount. All right, what's the weather supposed to be like in Nova Scotia for the next week? How are we ever gonna be able to test this telescope? Well, I just got a call from Inspiration4 astronaut, Dr. Cyan Proctor, asking me to help run a stargazing event at Arizona State University this weekend. Now, I knew Dr. Proctor before she was an astronaut, but I also helped her publish her book, Space to Inspire, when she got back from orbit. So let's pack up the Skywatcher Evolux 82 and head to Phoenix. We're gonna test this tomorrow night at um, Sun Devil Stadium. At Sun Devil which is Stadium, right in the background there, uh, for a Space to Inspire weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Is that cool? That's super. 
Oh my gosh, that's incredible. It's amazing. Like I, I, I think I never looked far enough to see before. It's amazing. That's really. And you helped put Chandra up there, and you've never looked at Jupiter in a little telescope. What? You yeah. must have done this before. You know, different, um, but not Jupiter for some reason. It's orange, and it's yellow, and it's not a dot. Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's so red. That's so cool. <laughs> so it's the, the red. I, I... Even though Phoenix's skies are extremely light polluted, we were able to get clear views of the Pleiades, as well as the Orion Nebula. This is where I really noticed the difference between this premium telescope and a typical beginner telescope. At the stadium, there was a full-scale mock-up of Blue Origin's new Shepard capsule, which is where I met Sara Sabri, the first person from Egypt to fly in space. I had a great conversation with Ed Dwight, the first African-American to be trained as an astronaut. I met with members of ASU's astronomy club, and then they put me in front of a microphone. Put up your hand if you've ever owned a telescope. Oh my gosh, that's like almost everyone. Okay, put up your hand if you feel confident you knew how to use it to find almost anything you want to find in the sky. <laughs> Three hands. Well, after a quick trip to Phoenix's Botanical Gardens, it was time to catch the plane back to Canada. I need to take a moment to thank All Star Telescope for sending me the Skywatcher Evolux 82 and for sponsoring this video. All Star Telescope is based here in Canada, but they ship to many other countries as well. They have one of the nicest websites and the largest inventories of quality telescopes. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. One of the challenges telescope owners have is knowing where to point their telescopes after they've observed the moon and bright planets. They soon realize that the tonight's best feature in all those stargazing apps vastly overestimates what they're realistically able to see. That's why I wrote 110 Things to See with a Telescope. This book solves that issue. The book is organized by season and provides a designated star map for every Messier object, with several bonus targets thrown in there as well. Take your stargazing experience to the next level with 110 things to see with a telescope. Now back to the Evolux 82. All right, let's build us an imaging rig. So we've put the Evolux 82 on the AZ GTI mount with the wedge, which on paper has about the same capabilities as the Star Adventurer GTI, which I'm guessing would be the ideal pairing for this telescope. But alas, I've got to work with what I've got. This mount has a capacity of 11 pounds, and this gear weighs somewhere between 9 and 10 pounds. This is pretty close to capacity, but I think we'll be okay. In addition to the weight, this setup is also fairly long. It probably would have been better balanced to move the scope even further forward on the mount. But while tracking during our first session, guiding averaged just over one arc second, so no complaints there. However, on our first night of imaging, I realized that with or without my field flattener, the telescope could not reach focus, and it didn't come with any focus tube extensions. After searching through every drawer in my house and the garage, I did find an extender, but one that did not work with my field flattener. So I put the light pollution filter on and took my flats. After 15 3 minute exposures, I could tell that this image wasn't going to get much better. I pulled the file up on the computer and gave it a quick stretch in Photoshop. As you can see, the stars near the middle are nice and round, but as you move out to the side, you can see serious coma in the stars. I guess we really do need that field flattener. So for my second night imaging with the telescope, I was planning on making three modifications. The first was to move the telescope up on the mounting bracket for better balance, but after a quick test, I realized it's not too bad, so I think I'll leave it where it is. The second change is that we'll add the 0.8 field flattener focal reducer. I also found the adapter, which should help us achieve focus this time. I'll screw this into the camera side. I'm not sure if this will work, but it's the only place it fits. Finally, we'll add the electronic focuser, which took pretty much all day to figure out. For starters, the Allen wrenches that come with the telescope and the electronic focuser are too large for the screws and the focusing knobs. All right, so even our smallest Allen wrench would fit, so we had to go to Canadian Tire and buy a whole set. All right, so we took off the main focusing knob, the one without the fine focus knob, and immediately realized that the adapter doesn't fit on this side. 
Well, a special thanks to Mam and Yaka for their one and only post on Stargazer's Lounge. There's a hole behind the fine focusing assembly that enables you to remove both knobs as a single unit. The opening on this side is large enough to fit the adapter. We'll tighten the adapter through the access holes and attach the electronic focuser to the telescope with two bolts and two washers. There's not enough play for four bolts, but two should hold it just fine. Tighten everything up, plug the electronic focuser into the back of the camera, and we should be good to go. Due to the amount of ice and snow, I had to set up on the deck, which isn't ideal, and I only had a few minutes before my targets went behind the neighbor's house. But I was undeterred. I took my flats, tested the electronic focuser, and started taking images. Well, after just three exposures on M42, I could tell that we'd created a successful imaging rig. Here's the Orion Nebula after just nine minutes of exposure time, and you can see that the stars are looking great all the way to the edge. I did notice that my red filming light was pointed at the telescope, which is the reason for the slight red gradient. Next, I moved over to the Rosette Nebula and was able to snag seven three-minute exposures before the object moved behind the house. Dropping this into Photoshop, I stretched the image in curves, adjusted the levels, aligned the color channels using Camera Raw Filter, then did a final stretch and level, boosted the clarity, and denoised the image. I'm confident that if I were to get several hours of exposure on this object, the results would be even more fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Skywatcher Evolux Telescope. Thanks again to All Star Telescope for sponsoring this video. Check them out at allstartelescope.com. They're based here in Canada, but they ship to the USA as well. Subscribe to Learn to Stargaze to help you get the most out of your stargazing experience. Check out our website at learntostargaze.com for unique stargazing merchandise. And remember, the future is looking up.